Today I'm going to show how to convert the Veloster N steering wheel to the updated wheel offered on the Elantra Ns. The update offered on the Elantra relocated the NGS from being a small square button cluster on the side of the steering wheel to its own dedicated large round red button. This is not only a visual improvement, but it helps with accidental pushing of the NGS button. Pushing the button accidentally can be alarming, which could lead to possible accident or harm to the engine and transmission. The conversion kit is made up of OEM parts. The parts consist of a new steering wheel back plate and right side button housing. I purchased these parts from N75 Motorsports. N75 is a great place to purchase parts for all Hyundai N vehicles. I can't recommend them enough. If you have questions regarding your vehicle, the owner is quick to respond and provide the request information you're looking for. The differences between the Veloster's and the Elantra's button housing are as follows. The lane keep assist is replaced by the cruise, pause, resume button. The NGS button is replaced by the lane keep assist button. The large blue N button's flag is now an N. And finally, the NGS button is located underneath the N button. To begin the installation process, you'll want to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. This is a safety precaution because we will be unplugging the airbag. Remove the negative terminal's cover, then use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen the terminal. Once the terminal is loose, use a rag to cover the battery so the terminal doesn't accidentally come in contact with the battery. With the battery disconnected, we need to move to the interior of the car and remove the steering wheel. To do this, you'll first need to rotate the steering wheel 90 degrees. Once you have the wheel turned 90 degrees, you'll want to look on the back of the wheel for a small square hole. This is located next to a gold screw. Using a screwdriver, stick the screwdriver in the hole and lift up on the screwdriver. You will hear a click and the center section of the steering wheel should release slightly. After this is done, turn the wheel the opposite direction and repeat the process. After you release the second side, you should be able to pull the center section of the wheel out. This step can be a bit tricky, but it is not overly difficult. To remove the center section completely, you'll need to disconnect three wires. The wires are held together with a plastic retainer. Using your screwdriver, open the plastic retainer. Next, unplug the white wire harness. Finally, remove the two airbag wire harnesses. These two harnesses are held in place with spring clips on each side of the harness. I was unable to lift both sides at the same time with my fingers, so I used a small screwdriver on each side instead. Once the harnesses pop up, you can detach the center of the steering wheel. Now that we have the center section removed, turn the steering wheel back to center. Using a 22 millimeter socket, and an impact wrench or breaker bar, remove the center bolt. After you remove the bolt, you'll notice three red lines. You will need to make sure when reattaching the steering wheel, you match up these lines again. Before you can remove the wheel, you need to unplug the large white wire harness at the top of the steering wheel. After the wire harness has been unplugged, you can remove the steering wheel. We can take the steering wheel over to the workbench and install the new parts. The back section of the wheel needs to be removed first. To remove the back of the steering wheel, begin by removing the two screws on the front of the steering wheel that hold the paddle shifters in place. After the screws have been removed, turn the wheel over and using a small screwdriver, pop the paddle shifters off the steering wheel. You will have to unplug each paddle's wiring harness before they can be completely removed.
Next, remove the four screws holding the back section of the steering wheel in place. After these screws have been removed, push the wiring harness at the top of the wheel forward to unlatch them from the back plate. This will allow you to detach the back plate completely. Now that the back plate has been removed, we need to remove the buttons located on the right side of the wheel. To remove the buttons, you need to remove three screws holding the button housing in place. After the screws have been removed, unplug the button's white wiring harness. Once completed, you can detach the button housing from the wheel. To install the new button housing, we have to reverse the steps we just did. Please note the carbon fiber you see on the buttons is an overlay piece we purchased separately and does not come with this kit. With the steps reversed, the steering wheel kit is installed. Now time to put the wheel back in the car and complete the installation process. As you're putting the wheel back into place, 
Make sure the plastic ring with the wire is lined up correctly with the wheel. The wires should be at the top. Also, make sure the red lines on the steering rack match up with the lines on the center of the wheel. Reattach the white wire harness at the top of the wheel. Next, hand tighten the center bolt. After the bolt has been tightened, use a torque wrench and torque the bolt to 35 foot-pounds. You can now reinstall the airbag. Slide the wires back through the plastic wire retainer on the bottom of the airbag. Then reattach the two airbag wire harnesses and the white wire harness. After the wires have been reattached, push the airbag onto the steering wheel until you hear two clicks. Before we can test the buttons, you'll need to reconnect the negative battery terminal. With the battery reconnected, you can now test the buttons. When testing the buttons, we found everything worked as it should. Then we took the car out on the highway to test the NGS button. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.